Hi, I'm Rosario Dawson. I'm here at BuzzFeed, and I am here to talk about my first times, starting with this is my first time doing this game. <laughs> first time you ever saw Rent, and for the first time when I was around 24? Yeah, so just a few years after it came out. Powerful. It was the first time I ever saw something that highlighted my life story and made it seem awesome, because I grew up in a squat in the Lower East Side, and I didn't know that folks that I grew up with could be protagonists. My first job, my first job actually, I got paid $20 to work on Sesame Street. One of the people who grew up in the squat that I grew up in, one of the people who lived there, she was dating a cameraman on Sesame Street and was working with Children's Liberation. We were doing a community garden video, which still exists today, and that's still the my favorite way to get recognized. When I've had little kids come up like, are you on Sesame Street? I'm like, yes, I was. The first role you really wanted but didn't get. Dang, where'd it go dark? And you know what? The first role that I really remember, I got actually I got the role. It was called Lift, and I got offered the role, and it was between that or the adventures of Pluto Nash. You know, Lift would have been here in New York for no money, a little indie film, or I could go to Canada and shoot this movie with Eddie Murphy and see what could happen. And I remember my mom and everybody arguing me like, you need to get off this couch. And so Carrie Washington ended up doing the job. And I, I always remember looking back on that moment like, did I mess up? Is that the wrong choice? But I think it worked out okay for the both of us, so we're fine. First thing you kept from a set? I don't remember keeping anything from kids. I actually got things stolen from me when I was in kids. I remember going to go to rehearsal on my bicycle and it getting stolen by the time I came out from rehearsal. It was great. But the first thing I kept from a set was on He Got Game. It's a Spike Lee movie set in Coney Island, Brooklyn, which is actually where I was born. My uh, character went to Lincoln High School, which is the high school that my mom and all of my uncles went to. And she actually had to drop out of school from there because she found out later that she gets gestational diabetes when she's pregnant, so she can't produce enough insulin for both her and the baby, so she kept passing out. And then 18 years later, I was shooting a Spike Lee movie there, um, doing a scene right outside of Lincoln High School with Denzel Washington. And so I kept, I have these Lincoln High School sweat track suit outfit thing or whatever, and I kept that because I just thought that was really cool that at one point, 18 years earlier, I was in the womb there, and now I was working on a Spike Lee joint. My first audition, now that's easy, <laughs> was for this movie called Kids. I was hanging out on my stoop because my dad told me to. They were shooting a Vibe commercial on the block and my dad told me to go downstairs and get discovered because he'd overheard someone saying that they wanted dancers. Um, and I went downstairs and I did end up dancing in the um, commercial, but I scored my first audition because Larry Clark and Harmony Corinne and a bunch of the crew were walking by scouting for locations and saw me and asked me if I'd audition for kids and that changed my life forever. First kiss. It didn't say with my current boyfriend. It just says first kiss. Sorry, my love. <clears throat> Did they? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> and it's so funny, actually, I remember having this conversation with Chloe and kids because it happened that summer when I turned 15 in Tompkins Square Park in the skate, the skate park now area. I, I, I think we're playing like truth or dare or spin the ball, something like that. And I ended up making out and thinking it was not so great. And so in, in the scene, I remember her laughing, going, Rosario, because I was telling her the story. I was like, oh my God, I just had my first kiss. It's Africa Square Park. And her just being like, because I was really young, even though I played a really promiscuous character, I was very much not like that in real life. First time I knew I was famous, for me, the real telltale of like fame is walking down in like around Central Park and seeing those artists who were doing like portraits for, for money. And they always have like certain staple people that they already have to show what kind of, you know, what their art looks like. And I still have never seen anyone have my picture there to be like, see, look how well I drew Rosario. Like, don't you want to pay me some money to do your portrait? So until that day happens, I still just, I just don't think it's happened. Still working on it, guys, still working on it. First thing I do on my phone when I wake up, I usually am checking to see if my boyfriend has sent me a song or a poem or something that's going on in his day. Because we have a lot of our relationship long distance and that's our, our messages in a bottle that we send to each other. First time I saw myself in a magazine, you know, and I've actually been trying to find this image. It's a picture, I think it's in Details Magazine, and they were doing a profile on squatters and it's a picture, black and white picture of my dad and I in our living room. 
I think we were past the point of having a cast iron stove in the living room, which was totally illegal, but the only way we stayed warm. But it was just like a picture of the two of us, like him sitting down on the ground and I'm kind of like we're folded on each other and just looking kind of soberly at the camera. And I remember being so blown away because that photo ended up coming up later in my life. This artist um, spotted me on the street and asked if he could do my portrait. And when I went to his place, there was this photo, this, this, this drawing of this girl. I really was like, I, that really looks like me. And he was like, no, 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 that's off of a girl I got out of a magazine. And then he proceeded to pull the magazine out with the picture of me and my dad. And somehow this guy had drawn a portrait of me when I was a young girl. And then all the years later, spotted me on the street and asked to draw my portrait again, which is kind of amazing. So I'm still looking for that magazine. First scene I remember filming with Yael on Jane the Virgin. My first scene with Yael actually was in her office and uh, loving my like power suits and being very bemused with her frantic and incredible energy. You know, when I got that job, it was uh, Gina Rodriguez had reached out to me over the holidays because they'd cast that character already and actually shot several scenes with her. And in an emergency, they needed to replace that actress, the scenes immediately, very quickly, because they had to keep shooting and also, you know, recut and refilm that stuff. And I had no idea where the character was gonna end up going. I had no idea we were gonna end up having a tryst and a love affair or whatever. So it was just, it was kind of great because I don't think my character obviously knew that either. It was just really awesome. Mel is incredible. She just had a baby and I love her very much and I'm so grateful for working on that. First memory from the Josie and the Pussycat set. The first one that comes to mind is we were shooting this scene where we were doing a concert. So we all had ears and tails on and sparkly little outfits, 2000s-ish outfits. I was actually, I wasn't smoking cigarettes at the time. I was still very anti-cigarette. And, um, but Rachel and Tara were smoking. So I went out with them while they were smoking and were just talking with them. And I remember um, both of their eyes getting really big and being like, we need to go back inside right now. And it took me a second to realize what was happening, but there were all of these girls, because there was all these extras and different people who were around that day who were like touching my hair and twirling my tail and like just being very intimate <laughs> with my costume and myself. And I hadn't noticed, it was that first moment where I felt like I'd lost my New York card because I'd now gotten so accustomed to being on set and someone fidgeting with my mic and t you know adjusting my wardrobe and you know, just, you know, fixing, touching up my hair, that I just ignored the feelings and I was like, never again. Okay, so first CD I bought, and the reason why I wanna bring this up is pretty cool, is because back in the day, you know, you went to a CD store to buy music, you couldn't just stream it, and I wanted to have the soundtrack to Reservoir Dogs, and the CD shop in Union Square didn't have it, that doesn't even exist anymore, that store, so I had to order it. And I remember them finally calling me and saying my CD came in. And it was just so great. And I love everything about it, including all the interludes that are on it. And because of that, and all the years later, I ended up working on Death Proof with Quinton. I ended up winning five bucks in trivia because I remembered how many dicks he said in his opening monologue. And he didn't, but that's because I listened to that CD so much. So, boom. So that was really, really fun. Thanks so much. Um, I'm Rosaria Dawson. Uh, this is Buzzfeed, and please check out Briar Patch. Enjoy.